Blanch it, peel it, core it, blend it till it's smooth and glossy. Spank your tomato, spank it till it's saucy. Cook it long and cook it hot, do that spanking thing. More you spank your mater, the more your body sinks. Spank the tomato, spank the tomato, spank the tomato. Mm. Come on, booster seat. My booster seat. We're sterilizing all of our stuff because you want the good bacteria in your yogurt, not the funky stuff. So you want to sterilize everything. He even sterilized his uh, thermometer. Yes, uh, we're adding uh, some milk to the Instapot here. And uh, going to bring it up to 180 degrees. And check it often. How often were you checking it? I was checking it about every uh, 10 minutes. It took me about 20 minutes to bring it up to temp with the Instapot set on the uh, saute function. And then after that, what do we do? Then after that, we pulled the pot out and uh, set it on the counter to cool off. Um, we skim the top of it. There's a layer that forms on it. You don't want that in your yogurt. Nope. Then you add your yogurt and you let it sit on the counter until it comes down to between 108 and 110 degrees. Then you put it back in your Instapot and what setting did you use? It's got a yogurt setting on it and we went for two hours extra because after the initial eight hours it wasn't set up enough and we like a nice firm yogurt so 10 hours was uh, worked well for us. Spank the bell, smack the like, comment on our spanking ways. All our spanking videos will keep you fed for days. Spank the tomato, spank the tomato, spank the tomato. Mm. Granola goes with anything. We're making a bunch of things here, actually. Yeah. Since we had to run the oven, we thought, what the heck? And we're doing the granola, making bread. And we're doing the cookies all at the same time. What that you want to do is when you're adding your wet ingredients, you want to mix the heck out of it. And you can see here, I am mixing and mixing and mixing, trying to get every piece of oat coated. That wonderful molasses. Love molasses. It's a great sweetener and it's healthy for you. Yeah. One recipe I found online said to use the wax paper. I tried it. The wax paper sticks to your granola. Don't do it. Just get a lot of <laughs> butter and coat them really good. Learn from experience. Yep. Who doesn't like a little butter? Butter is our friend. <laughs> So we made three kinds of granola because people have different tastes. Some people just like it plain, some like it with nuts, and some like it with spices and fruits. Fruit. Yes. I like mine just nutty. You are nutty. Hey now. <laughs> the pot calling the kettle black there. I like mine with uh, dried berries in it, so I put some currants and some uh, goji berries. Dried. Yeah. Dried. Why not fresh fruit? Uh, the wet, fresh fruit, I tried some apples. It didn't work out so well. It just made my uh, granola kind of moist. So I made that mistake and learned from it and used dried fruits. Oh, so three kinds of granola. One regular with nuts. One with uh, cinnamon and nutmeg. Proportions uh, we gave you on the ingredient list. Uh, adjust them to any way you like it. I happen to like lots of cinnamon. That, how much did you use? I used a tablespoon of uh, cinnamon in my batch and a teaspoon of nutmeg. Shaved the nutmeg down because I only had it whole. I didn't have it in powdered form. You'll see me grating that. Fresh ground. And just a handful of uh, each kind of berry. That wasn't any precise measurement. This is such a great recipe for making it the way you want it. Um, you can add almost anything to it and have it turn out great.
squirrel. What up, cooks? <laughs> We're making nut cookies. Um, so good. We're fortunate enough to have a place here where they've got three different kinds of nuts that you can fresh, fresh press right there in the store. I chose peanut butter. I've tried pecan and I've tried cashew. They are extremely good. So one mistake that I made, this whole video here is actually kind of an experiment. I was just fiddle farting around having fun. And one of the things that I think I should have done that I didn't do was mix the baking powder, the soda powder, and the, the flour together first and then adding it to the rest of the, the mixture. And so what I wound up doing was just mixing the holy heck out of it and it worked fine. Didn't bite into any cookies with like an extra baking soda powder yucky flavor. So we learned by experience. Next time we, we will use the KitchenAid mixer with the wire whip on it or the paddle and see how that turns out. Save some time and uh, some arm. Power tools. Yeah, power. <laughs> As part of my experiments doing this, I tried different shapes and sizes of cookie cutouts when I first started, and something that I found works really well is like solid shapes without wispy ends. Um, I tried some flower ones, but the little ends of the flowers, they kind of fall off. They're, they're not very strong. I did some leaves, and I did, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, I did a pineapple, and those worked really well. They were more solid. Nothing and fell the off. end of the day, the dudes just want a nice peanut butter cookie crop hatched on the top of the pork, and away you go. Maybe some milk or a beer. Oh, <laughs> cookies and beer. Sure. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. <laughs> I mean, cookies are good for any time. When I pressed the chocolate chips into the cookie, um, kept finding they just kind of fell over. So I actually turned them upside down and pushed the top in first. That seemed to work quite a bit better. There we go. There's a better angle on it. Oh yeah. So what happened to your dough here? Well, so in the instructions, you're supposed to put it in the fridge for a couple hours to set up after you get it all mixed really well. And I went overnight. Um, sure, two hours would have been the same consistency anyway. But it was like messing with a rock. And so what I wound up doing was walking away for about 15 minutes, letting everything warm up and become pliable again. Very good. Yeah. Well, I like the way your cookies turned out. They taste great, and several other people confirm that. Any special ingredients you recommend over others, like sugar, for instance? I like coconut sugar. I prefer it over table sugar. Uh, it still has some of the nutrients and vitamins in it. Plus, it's got a flavor that's not just sweet. It's got another dimension to it. it the cookies taste richer. I like them. They're almost gone. Well, not fast enough for me because I am doing a personal challenge. And I'm going to see if I can lose 20 pounds in 30 days and invite you to come along once a week. At the end of the video, you will see what my starting weight is from this morning and every Wednesday I will update you on my exercise routine and what I've been eating throughout the week and eh, roughly how much. Pretty much when I'm doing this, I'm just running my ass off and I don't really care too much about calories or anything like that. I just try and eat healthy like I always do. It's worked before, so for 20 years now I've been a little bit lazy. I'm gonna see if I can do something about it. Sounds like sweat's gonna be involved. Oh, lots of sweat. And drink plenty of water, right? Another thing that I did was we had a little bit of leftover granola and not enough to make a batch in the oven. And so we set aside and I wound up, you'll see in a minute, mixing it in the cookie dough just see what would happen and uh, they turned out pretty good they so were peanut butter and oatmeal yep. and nut cookies turned out great peanut butter dough and granola and i will do it again taste testing verified they're yes. great 
Spank it, squeeze it, fry it, there really is no limit. The menu is wide open, just get that mater in it. And spank the tomato, spank the tomato, spank the tomato. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Spank that thing. You took some to work. Oh what yeah, we're still eating on them. Here, let me go get one. Okay, you go get a cookie. Make sure they're okay.